So what we're going to be doing is going over the task and reacting to it because I haven't seen the whole thing. I've only seen bits and pieces of it, but I want to show off all of it and also kind of analyze it and go over like exactly how he does everything because there's a lot of like small minor details that you wouldn't know unless somebody pointed it out when it comes to KH2. And also to explain what TAS is, TAS is a tool assisted speedrun. So somebody uses an emulator and does everything as fast as possible without like hacking in any extra thing. So like you could hack in like a one shot, but it's doing the absolute fastest that you can without cheating at all with something external. So like this is all actually possible like in game, but no one's ever going to be able to do it because it's like you have to be a god to do it. It was made by 2KHZ. Okay, look at this menu. See, you can you can menu basically frame perfectly like every single frame you can move the the cursor like no one could ever menu that fast in real time okay i don't know what keeper you put on but he's going the luxor first okay the first to run out of time is the loser a challenge is <laughs> okay so that's one thing So in the actual speedrun for Data Org, we do a thing called, let me think, Quick RC. I don't know if that's the official name, but I'm going to call it Quick RC. It's when you reboot up the game and when you load the game, the RNG for where the circle is going to be in all of Luxor's minigames are actually in the same place because we know what the RNG is like when we start the game. So we're able to press triangle and X at the same time so that we do, oh, quick release, yeah. So that we get the RC done like on the first input and it saves a lot of time. Like it makes Luxor to free file. But we do RNG manipulation beforehand to make sure the RNG is right. But he didn't do any manipulation, he just went straight in. Because he just knows where the circle is going to be. So this is normal, just... He's using a thunder to force Luxa to retaliate. Yeah, so this is normal. So he does the thunder right there to force Luxa to retaliate. And if you make Luxa retaliate in the air, he's going to come at you with cards and then do uh, go underground and do like his card thing where you have to find the right card that has Luxa on it. But if you make him retaliate on the ground, then he'll either do a mini game or he'll throw more cards out. That's another thing that you manipulate for in the data org run. Yeah, so it's, it's basically like a 50-50 if you'll do a mini game or cards. So he's not gonna uh, DM skip because skipping the DM is actually slower. <laughs> oh, this is just to show off. Oh my god, look at that. He's like a pixel away from the card. Okay. <laughs> Dude. Like. Yeah, that, that's insane. It's crazy how fast you can do that. It's one of my favorite things about this game is that the menu, the command menu is, is like, um, there's no lag between your inputs there. You can just move it so fast if you were like a robot. Okay, he's going to, um, what is this? Oh, Data Axel. And he has um, Mysterious Abyss on for Data Axel. Okay, he's menuing blizzards. That's hard. But this is the uh, this is also normal. So you just uh, the way that so the reason that Axel is um. Like, I think normally Axel would be going into the wall and doing the RC, but whenever you do the Bazaga finisher, it staggers him in a weird way where he won't retaliate after. And I think there's other things that do it too, like Final Form Thundaga and also like Fire, a uh, Fireaga in a way. Yeah, there's some attacks where the way that they stagger the boss, they don't like retaliate after, no matter what you do. If he does like a Thunder after, then you retaliate, but because of the stagger animation, it like makes him stay on the ground. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So this is a way to, to loop Axel, and it's not actually that hard to do. Man, he was really close to him right there, holy cow. Okay, see the other blizzard um, 
made him retaliate because it wasn't the finisher. Now finishes him off with the blizzards. Yep, just enough. Okay, so there's Axo. That wasn't too crazy. Just some fancy menuing with the blizzard. <laughs> oh my god. Bro, that's crazy. What did he just do? Like, there's no way anyone can comprehend what he just did. That was insane. <laughs> so he found the Megalixes right there. He placed them for Down and Goofy too. The customize he changed somehow. Okay. Alright, I think I saw a bit of Zexion before and it's like insane. <laughs> Let's see what he does. Um Okay, fire final form. Final form for Aga, makes sense. I think he has um Okay. Thunder, give him stuns. Okay, okay, so this is- okay, there's a lot going on here. So, Final Form Thundaga has the same thing where bosses can't retaliate after Thundaga in Final Form. So this is another thing that the speedrun does where there's a point where Zexion, like right here, if he did other attacks then he might retaliate, but because he's using Thundaga, he won't like do anything for a period of time. And then, right here, he does a fire, and if you look at his drive gauge on the bottom right, like his form gauge, he has zero, so like he should be reverting. But if you do an input, when your drive is at zero and you do an input, frame perfectly after your last input, you won't revert yet. So like you can do a full combo with zero drive if you do frame perfect inputs for like every hit of the combo. And that's what he's doing right here. And he, oh my god. And he's like continuing it with attacks. Okay. Oh my god, dude, what? That's insane. Wow, okay. That's crazy. So he reverted right here. And did it uh, horizontal to keep him staggered. His RV is so high that he definitely should be retaliating right now. His RV is like way higher than it should be. And then he does Comet to keep him stunned. I don't even know how he kept him stunned right there either. And then he just does Comet hits and then this finisher. I assume he's like at the wall. I don't know how he like kept him in the comet finisher. It's it's really impressive that he was able to keep him stunned. Like if Zexion had a couple frames to break to not take da any damage, then he would uh, use his DM. So I don't know how he did that. That's crazy. Okay, Vexen. There's a DM skip for Vexen. Final form. So right there, he... He reflected... <laughs> the Asiko was like in the wall. But the reflect still went off. That's crazy. Okay. Like you can't even see the Asiko there. He's seeing fire. Okay, Death Flare. So the trick right here is that if you get to Vexen's DM HP while Antisora is out, then he won't DM until he brings Antisora back in. But if you kill Antisora before he tries to bring Antisora back in, then you skip Vexen's DM entirely. And that's what he's gonna do right here. So he's gonna go final. See, Vexen got his shield back like a little bit before Antisora died. And that's because he was about to DM, but because Antisora died after, he's not gonna DM now. And now you just does final Faraga for the rest, I assume. Nice. That's what you do on the PS4 run, but it's a lot easier because on PS4 you have Duck Flare, uh, OP Duck Flare. This is the original 2FM where Duck Flare was a lot weaker. Now he's doing- I guess he's doing them in, um, clockwise order. Okay, here's Zigbar. You really shouldn't have betrayed us. 
That's flare, right? Yeah. Okay, he's gonna do horizontal loop. Oh my god, okay, so... Donald threw an elixir. And then he did duck flare, like, the frame that he could. Like, that's incredibly hard to do. Like, there's no one- I've never seen anyone do that in real time. Because he had to keep Zigbar staggered, like, during that. Yeah, he's gonna do this the whole fight, that's crazy. That's actually crazy. <laughs> he's just never gonna touch the ground. Zigbar, but the floor is lava. The reason this is insane is because the, the only reason that Sora is able to do infinite horizontal slashes here is because he's in Berserk Charge. But the second that you get your MP back, you're not in Berserk Charge anymore. But because you're not in Berserk Charge anymore, you can't do any more air combo hits. So you can't do another horizontal slash to keep him staggered. So you have to do Duck Flare, like the frame you get your MP back, and then do another horizontal slash, like the frame after that to keep him staggered. And then repeat that every single time that Down and Goofy draw you elixirs. It's just like insane. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. He was doing um, aerial spirals, like right here. That might be partly because of Duck Flare, and partly because if you do too many horizontal slashes, every horizontal slash like builds you upwards a little bit, it gives you some vertical movement. So if you do it too much, then you'll actually be too high to hit Zigbar anymore, and he'll break out. I'm not sure, VG. Aerial Dive, I know, is fast. I don't know about Aerial Spiral. Okay, Zodin. He's skipping. Uh, he might do Final Zemnus last for the swag or something. He might do the same thing here, actually. Yeah, so you have to reflect. You have to reflect at the start. Um, well, at the beginning of the fight, he doesn't have his barrier yet. Um, so you can reflect into area dive and do some quick damage on on him before he gets his barrier. Okay. I'm guessing he's gonna do the same thing. The horizontal slashes for uh, Zodin are a lot harder to do than Zigbar too, by the way. Like, on Zigbar, you probably have, like, maybe three to five frames to do each horizontal slash uh, without him breaking out, but on Zodan, it's definitely less. Like, it feels a lot harder. There's not much more to say about this. I think you also have to get really lucky with when... Um... Okay, he's so it. Yeah, this is... See, this is hard. <laughs> Like, I can't imagine having the time, like, frame-perfect inputs at the same time as pressing triangle. And then... Man, that's crazy. <laughs> the comet finisher does so much damage if it is aligned right. Okay. Oh, now I was doing, uh, Zemnus. Okay. I don't know what keyblade you put on. Okay, just size the pumpkin. Reflect, hit, reflect, hit, reflect. Yep. Okay, so something here that's interesting. Um, this a lot of these things apply to like the regular speed run too. They're not pass only. But, um, so like right here, this is actually, there's more going on here than it seems, because if you reflect too early when he uh, hits you with the lightsaber, like if he does that reflect right there too early, then the reflect won't stagger him before the second reflect starts hitting. And if it doesn't stagger him before the second reflect starts hitting, then Xemnas won't teleport after the guard break. So he's actually timing it, um, like, 
precisely so that Zemnus will teleport after the guard break. And right here, okay, same thing happens. That's pretty hard. It's a lot easier to time that if you guard first and then reflect. Okay, and something else right here. Um, Zemnus will building in the data fight at about five, about four, like five bars of HP ish. He'll only building after you stagger him though. So the way to skip the building is to keep damaging him before, he, like without staggering him. So a way to do that is like right there, see the reflected damage, but because he was in the middle of an attack, it didn't stagger him at all. And right here, he timed it so that the reflect would go off right as he did his barrier, so he wouldn't get staggered. And now, during the long combo, he doesn't get staggered, and he's able to go limit and probably finish off the fight here. That was pretty cool. The ripple drive into, uh, ours. Have a good night, bunny love. Alright, I'm curious what he does on Final Zemnus. Anger and hate are supreme. Wait, what was that? Reflect, hit, reflect, hit, reflect. Wait, I'm can wait, how do you do that? Reflect, hit, reflect, hit. Does he have like three combo pluses on? Wait, how many does he have on? Yeah, that was a 5 hit combo, right? Wait, how do you do that? Yeah, he can only have 2, but he has 5. He has 3, doesn't he? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. He did 5 hits in that combo. That's crazy. I don't know how he did that. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, that's what he did. Wow, okay. So what he did here... Wow, okay. That's crazy. So whenever you do Dark Aura or Dark Shield as Riku, you get like an extra hit in your combo because for whatever reason, uh, RCs like that will re reset your combo. And I guess he used that to extend his ground combo by an extra hit, which is insane. Like that's crazy. Like we do that a lot with finishers. If you do, if you continuously do a Dark Aura between finishers, you can do like infinite finishers that way, as long as Riku has MP to do Dark Aura. But he did it for like a regular hit in his combo. And that's, that's crazy. Cause he was able to get three reflects off with that. Um, so it's RNG if Xemnas will do orbs or a vine, but obviously because it's past, um, he's getting the perfect RNG. <laughs> um, but the reason he did Finishing Leap right there was probably to manipulate the RNG too, because the actions that you do as Sora uh, changes the RNG. So like in the speedrun, we do some fires and stuff to make sure that he does the exact same thing. I'm assuming that's probably why. Like right there, he did fire, yeah. It's great. That explosion right there is really cool too. I, that that's really cool. I've never seen anyone do that. It seems really scary because like, if he explosioned any any later, he probably would get hit by that orb. Like look at how close that is. He's probably frames away from getting hit. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So Xemnas did the grab move that's supposed to throw you up and do the RC, but he reflected into fire to bring him into laser dome. Uh, I would say we can skip this part. Yeah, and then he goes to session so that he can immediately do it. <clears throat> okay. Um, this is like Sayus? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what he does here.
Thunder. What? What? <laughs> what? 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 What was that? <laughs> Why did he do that? Oh my god. I've never seen this before. What? Okay. Final? Okay, so when you're in final form, every time you use an item, it does actually like a lot of damage to whatever you're next to. Because final form Sora, like his keyblades go up. So like on like Seis and bosses that don't get staggered, it can do a lot of damage to them and that's why he's doing it um, right there. The main gimmick of this fight is trying to skip Lexeus from ever powering up. And he's already done it. I don't even know how he did it, actually. Like... So, like, normally, if you're a normal person, Lexeus will power up at about, like, four bars of HP right there. Like, at, like about right here is when he would power up. But somehow he was able to skip it right here. I'm not even sure how he did it. But... He's just skipping the power up animation. Oh, I thundered after though. I don't know. Okay, final. I think he's facing backwards for swag. I don't know if that's like purposeful. <laughs> In final form. Okay, that's better to finish it. And then thunders. Yep. Um, who's the next one here? Psyx. I'm actually, yeah, I wonder what he does in Psyx. Okay, Duck Flare. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, I was just gonna do a lot of Duck Flare spam, I think. Yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. So... Reflect, hit, reflect, into thunders to knock him up. And then, um, once he's being raised up by the duck flare, he's not gonna fall back down until the duck flare ends. But as soon as he lands on the ground, he's gonna immediately attack you. His attack is dependent on how far away he is from you, but because he's, like, right next to him, he, he does the rush attack. And when he does that, he reflects in snapshot reflect to get two reflects off, and then starts duck flare and just repeats that. I haven't seen this strat before. I think my <laughs> Donald used the elixir. Okay. Oh, that was cool. Okay, this is cool right here. Um. Okay, so w when he did right here, right here when he does the aerial spiral. Um, the way that Revenge Ryu works in this game is that every hit that's done when something else is hitting a boss will add the same RV. So normally when you do Aerial Sparrow, like the very last hit is when the RV is added, but and it might add, let's just say it adds like one RV. When you're doing Duck Flare, and you're doing Aerial Spiral during the Duck Flare, every single hit of the Keyblade from, like during the Duck Flare will add the same RV. So it adds like triple the RV. And I think he's purposely doing multiple hits here during Duck Flare, so that it adds an insane amount of RV, so that he can do Reflect, Slapshot, Reflect, and Duck Flare again, and after Duck Flare, he retaliates, even though it's not enough RV normally to make him retaliate. But because he did so much RV earlier with the Aerial Spirals, his RV didn't have time to tick it down enough for him to be at zero again. Because that's another thing with RV, is that if you have make somebody have enough RV, it doesn't immediately go to zero as soon as they attack. It will, like, tick it down as, on, like, a timer. So, like, when you do Peter Pan, for example, or you do Negative Combo, their RV is, like, 100. But that means that even if they, like, DM, and you attack them after when they're open, they might still attack you because their RV is still above, like it hasn't ticked down from 100 to 0 yet. It's, it's hard to explain, but I hope I did a good enough job. But he's doing the same thing here. That was cool.
Fire is different because the way that fire works is that instead of adding the same RV per hit, it doesn't add any RV at all. The reason that Final Form Faraga doesn't add any RV is because the Keyblades attack hit the boss while the fire is hitting the boss. And for some reason, fire, if anything attacks the thing that you're attacking with fire during the fire, it won't add any RV whatsoever. So like for Demix, you can have Goofy use Tornado. And if you use Wisdom Form Fire on Demix during the Tornado, then they won't add any RV because Goofy is hitting him in between the fires. It's weird the way that fire works. I don't know why it works that way. I think it's just an oversight. Okay, so he just did some fires and he's using Duck Flare. It's interesting that he's using Duck Flare to get rid of the water clones. That's kind of weird. Because I would have thought that Wisdom Form would be better. But maybe he wants to keep his drive. That's probably why. Yeah, and the clones, the way that they move is RNG. So I'm not sure if he like manipulated the fight to where the clones like are in the perfect spot. But he might have. Okay, so he Goofy's doing tornado, so Oh Okay, so what happened there? He So retaliated, I don't know why he retaliated there. There's like it's really weird, I can't explain it. It's like um like normally he shouldn't retaliate there, but I think because he spammed it, he was like high enough in the air to where he retaliated before he um he touched the ground or something. It's it's weird. Uh, like, it's not consistent sometimes when, when fire keeps him staggered. But then he reflects into fire and get another reflect off. Or not, he just goes straight to final. But the reason he did that was so that he could get Dembix in the corner, so that the clones would go a lot faster. And normally you would push him in the corner as wisdom form, but instead he just, uh, like, let Dembix do it himself because it's way faster, obviously. And now I'm just gonna spam Duck Flare. I knew that was a strat on PS4 runs, but I didn't know it was a strat in PS2 even when Duck Flare's like it lasts a lot shorter. Okay. Okay, and this is another thing. Um if Goofy tornadoes during the clone segment, the clones actually come out a lot faster than they would if he didn't tornado. Because like, I don't know how to explain this either, but it's like, I think the clones get sucked into his tornado. And so, it you can kill like a lot more because they, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know how to say, how to explain it, but like, something weird happens when the, uh, he tornadoes here. All I know is that it, 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 it it's faster. <laughs> that was just swag. I didn't lose that many time because Demix is not vulnerable until a little bit after his DM is over. <laughs> it could have been RNG Manip, yeah. Thunder into Comet. Okay. This is a cool thing you can do. You you, you end Comet when Marisha is gonna suck you in, because he has super armor right there where he won't get staggered, and then he does reflex during it because he uses an elixir to get his MP back, and um, you just do a lot of damage because the Comet's hitting him and your reflex are hitting him, and then that long combo he can't be staggered either, so you can get more reflex off. It goes into final, and the ending of the final transformation ended just in time to parry um, Marluxia's last scythe hit so that he could go into fires. Okay. I'm not sure why he did that, that was just for swag, I guess. 
Now you can just stand here and reflect the pools, um, because he's invincible from the comet. And then Magisha did his RC attack again. Yeah. Basically just abuse, uh... Wait, I don't know what the thunder is for. What the heck? <laughs> Oops, maybe it does more damage? Yeah, it might be- I don't know. It might have just been for swag too. Yeah, it could have been RNG Minip. A lot of weird stuff could be RNG Minip. What's Roxas gonna be like? Okay. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so cool, dude. I really like the Roxas fight because he can do such cool stuff like this. He did a full combo and the guard break. Reflect, slap, or flash step into reflect, slap shot. And then he delayed this guard break so that he could do it. <laughs> so he could hit Roxas right there and it's so cool. Okay. I'm assuming he's gonna get the Keyblades. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> limit. Oh, no, this is a speedrun strat, you can just spam Rs in limit form. Yeah, and then you want to Rs as soon as Roxas retaliates. Because you're invincible and you're able to stagger him again. That was cool. <laughs> like, that's so close to- he's so close to getting hit there. Like, he would never do this in a run, I feel. Maybe, I don't know. Like, this was so tight. Hang on. Yeah, he did a, he did an extra slap shot. Like, Roxas retaliated right here. But he did another slap shot just to get some more damage in before the... Like, he's so close to dying right here. He's so close to dying right there. One more combo to finish him. You're not invincible during every hit of a limit. So during ours, you're only invincible during the first, um, like maybe six or seven hits. Before you do the RC, you're invincible. But once you get to the RCs, you're not invincible. And when it comes to like Ragnarok, Ragnarok, you're also not invincible. I think, I think at all. I think you're not invincible at all during Ragnarok. When it comes to Strike Raid and Sonic Rave, you are invincible for the most part, but there's like frames between every RC where you might be vulnerable if you don't match it hard enough. So you can still get hit out of them. And now I think we have Larxene. Is that the last one? I think so, yeah. I wonder what we'll do here. That what the what? <laughs> Wait, what? Can you just do that? Like, what is that? That's crazy. Wait, no way. What? <laughs> I don't understand. How do you do that? Can you just? Are you just invincible? So, like, what I'm taking from that is that you're just invincible after you reflect. Like, maybe when you reflect the lightning, you just can't take damage from it anymore. That's my only explanation as to why that happens. Okay, final form- Oh! Okay. Oh, snap. Okay. So he did... Final form, fire into Blizzard. And then threw an elixir. 
the elixir adds RV, so she ret retaliates, and then he throws another elixir, and every time he throws an elixir, she retaliates. And then he runs away. Now she's in second phase, and in second phase, when she's split apart, they'll both do this long combo on you. And if you use Comet during the long combo, or Reflect, or anything that damages both of them, they'll take a lot of damage. <laughs> like, it just motes her. Just look at her HP bar go down. Like, oh my god. Like, two bars came, went, went away in, like, one frame. Like, look at this. Look at that right there. That's so much damage. That's crazy. I think that's it, right? Yep. <laughs> that's really cool. I, I really like... Um, all the tasks that are made for Kingdom Hearts 2. There's another task for level 1 that I also um, analyzed, and you can find out on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. I hope I explained everything well enough. And make sure to check out 2KHZ's channel. He has 69 subs now. <laughs> yeah, make sure to check him out.